Have you ever wondered what it truly means to live the life of a fully-fledged Hells Angels member? Contrary to the common portrayal in documentaries and reports, the reality of their everyday lives differs from popular assumptions. A staggering day in the life of a Hells Angels member can be filled with adrenaline-pumping adventures, unexpected acts of kindness, and unwavering loyalty to their brotherhood. Join us as we pull back the curtain on their captivating lifestyle, shedding light on the lesser-known aspects of this notorious motorcycle club. Beneath the rugged exterior, the Hells Angels are bound together by a strong sense of camaraderie and unity. Contrary to popular assumptions, their lives revolve around more than just criminality. A remarkable example of their compassion occurred six years ago, when tragedy struck and a young child lost his life. In a powerful act of solidarity, over a thousand Hells Angels members attended the funeral, setting aside any conflicts or rivalries. This touching display of brotherhood reveals the profound sense of community that underpins their existence. While the media often focuses on the sensational, the Hells Angels actively engage in charitable endeavors to uplift their community. Through organized charity rides, both club members and sponsors come together, contributing participation fees that are then donated to noble causes. However, these generous gestures come with their fair share of challenges. Not everyone readily accepts donations from the Hells Angels due to their lingering doubts and reservations. But what happens when the facade of camaraderie and community within the Hells Angels is shattered? You see, former member Khazra Zagaran, who disassociated himself from the Berlin chapter, sheds light on the darker side of certain charters. In an eye-opening interview, Zagaran discloses that some charters operate in a manner reminiscent of mafia gangs. Initially joining the motorcycle club while working in security, he became entangled in an unfortunate incident involving a betting office robbery that led to a tragic loss of life. Zagaran's decision to sever ties with his former brethren and enter a witness protection program emphasizes the complex nature of the Hells Angels and their ongoing efforts to address illicit activities within their ranks. In addition to being friends and doing charitable work together, the motorcycle gang sometimes gets into fights with other rival gangs. These conflicts can become very dangerous and chaotic, causing a lot of trouble and sadness. Recently, there was a fight in a parking lot that ended with nine gang members losing their lives. Families who were there were scared and watched in horror as the fight happened, with people hitting each other and using weapons. Sometimes these fights get so bad that people from one gang will kidnap or hurt members of another gang. But it's important to know that not all members of the Hells Angels gang are violent. Many of them join the gang because they wanted to be part of a community and have peace, not fights. Law enforcement agencies used to pay more attention to the Hells Angels due to negative headlines. This means that Hells Angels members have to deal with encounters with the police, searches, seizures, and even raids on a regular basis. While some searches may seem intrusive, it's important to acknowledge that law enforcement has valid reasons for their actions. Drug sales are just one part of the problem. There are also more serious issues, like shootings and battles for control in certain areas. These encounters create tensions, especially in places known for prostitution, drug trafficking, and entertainment. Authorities have been struggling to completely ban the Hells Angels. This is because not all local groups are involved in criminal activities, and many members have no connection to illegal behavior. However, certain chapters have consistently been labeled as criminal organizations, leading to bans and making things more complicated for the authorities. The challenge lies in distinguishing between members who follow the law and those involved in illegal activities. They often pretend to be legal in their public businesses. They might run bars, nightclubs, security services, adult establishments, or tattoo shops while following the rules and paying taxes. However, they keep their illegal actions hidden from the public. Only within their secretive biker community do they reveal their secrets, and it's seen as a serious offense to work with the police. People who leave the Hells Angels and speak out about their true activities are a valuable source of information. These defectors risk their lives by doing so. There are rumors that the Hells Angels offer large sums of money, up to half a million euros, to capture and eliminate these individuals. The stakes are high, and those who expose the inner workings of the criminal group face severe consequences. Currently, Frank Hanabut, a former leader of the German Hells Angels, is facing trial in Mallorca. He sought refuge on the island after a well-publicized police raid on his property in Germany, which even involved a helicopter. 
Hanabu is charged with coercion and involvement in forced prostitution. He used to be the leader of the Hells Angels chapter in Spain and had significant influence within the European Hells Angels. He oversaw various adult establishments, nightclubs, and cinemas in Germany. Although he had a good reputation in the media and society seen as a respectable Hells Angel, the truth about his activities is now being revealed. The life of a Hells Angels member is a multifaceted journey, far from the one-dimensional portrayal often depicted in the media. Through their commitment to community, acts of compassion, and charitable endeavors, they strive to make a positive impact on the world around them. However, they also confront internal challenges, requiring vigilance and dedication to maintaining integrity. This captivating glimpse into the depths of being a Hells Angels member will leave you with a renewed understanding of their unique existence. The Hells Angels, renowned for their notorious reputation, have often been associated with criminal activities and lawlessness. While it's true that certain members have been involved in serious offenses like drug trafficking, assault, and even murder, it would be unfair to label the entire group solely based on these actions. In reality, the Hells Angels encompass a complex tapestry of individuals, many of whom can also be seen as formidable warriors. However, if anyone wants to join the group, they have to follow some of the most brutal, mandatory rules to become a Hells Angels member. Breaking these fundamental tenets carries dire consequences, ranging from expulsion, forcing individuals to abandon everything they know, to even more tragic outcomes where lives are lost. Now, let's see what are these rules. 1. You have to be voted into the group. Becoming a member of the Hells Angels is no easy feat. Before earning the prestigious title, individuals are referred to as prospects. These prospects undergo a period of initiation where they run errands and prove their loyalty, all in hopes of being voted into the group. It's a rigorous process that can span years, testing both commitment and dedication. Once accepted, however, membership is for life, binding them to the Brotherhood forever. 2. Their vests are treated as sacred. The iconic Hells Angels vest holds deep significance within the club. When a prospect earns full membership, they receive a vest adorned with the infamous logo and their name on the back. The vest is not just a piece of clothing, it's a symbol of honor and integrity. In times of trouble, when a member is arrested, they entrust their vest to a fellow brother, safeguarding it from the taint of jail. Even during emergency medical procedures, every effort is made to protect the vest from any damage, ensuring its sanctity remains intact. 3. They have a dress code. Have you ever wondered how the Hells Angels maintain a distinct image and identity? Well, one key aspect is their dress code. While some chapters have strict rules against wearing shorts, regardless of the scorching heat, others allow blue jeans and camouflage patterns. These color and design codes not only showcase individuality, but also serve as markers to distinguish members based on their respective charters. 4. There's an order that they ride in. When it comes to hitting the road, the Hells Angels follow a specific order. The road captain and charter president take the lead, guiding the group through their journey. Following them, the bikers align themselves based on seniority and rank. Seasoned members occupy positions closer to the front, while newer members follow suit. Finally, the prospects bring up the rear, symbolizing their status within the club. 5. They can't work for a prison Given the Hells Angels' tumultuous relationship with law enforcement, there are strict rules regarding members' occupations. While in the club, they are prohibited from working in prisons as well as holding positions as police officers. This restriction is rooted in the group's commitment to personal freedom and their insistence on operating by their own rules. Prison guards and law enforcement officers find themselves incompatible with the core principles and values upheld by the Hells Angels. 6. You can't share information about fellow members. Within the tight-knit brotherhood of the Hells Angels, loyalty is of paramount importance. Members are bound by an unspoken code that prohibits them from sharing any information about their fellow brothers. Any betrayal of this trust, such as ratting out a fellow member, carries severe consequences, often leading to expulsion from the club. The Hells Angels make it abundantly clear that questions about their members, even if they are missing, will not be answered. 7. Once a Hells Angel, always a Hells Angel Joining the ranks of the Hells Angels is a lifelong commitment. Once you become an official member, there is no turning back. 
retirement is unheard of within the club, and the only way to leave is by being forcibly expelled for breaking the rules. The charter becomes more than just an organization, it becomes a second family. When a member passes away, the entire brotherhood unites, honoring the memory of their fallen brother, forever cherishing the bond they shared. 8. No talking to the media Secrecy and discretion are woven into the fabric of the Hells Angels' existence. Consequently, members are strictly prohibited from engaging with the media. Their activities and affairs remain shrouded in mystery, allowing the Brotherhood to operate discreetly away from prying eyes. By maintaining a code of silence, the Hells Angels safeguard their traditions, rituals, and internal affairs from public scrutiny. 9. Harleys Only the Hells Angels have a long-standing tradition. To be a member, you must ride a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. This requirement holds immense value within the club, as it signifies a shared identity and a connection to their roots. Riding exclusively on Harleys is a testament to their commitment to the Hells Angels Brotherhood, reinforcing their distinct identity and unwavering pride. 10. They ride thousands of miles a year together. The Hells Angels' love for motorcycles is the unifying force that binds them together. Their website proudly states that they collectively ride approximately 12,000 miles each year. Through countless hours spent on the open road, the Hells Angels forge bonds that surpass mere camaraderie. Their shared passion and unrelenting spirit fuel their journeys, making the miles covered a testament to their unbreakable brotherhood. 11. Show up to club events Showing up to club events is a fundamental expectation for Hells Angels members. Attendance is not taken lightly, as it serves as a measure of commitment and respect. Members who consistently miss meetings and hangouts convey a lack of understanding and appreciation for the club's values. Such individuals are seen as disrespectful and are unlikely to progress beyond the initial hanging around phase of recruitment. Dedication to attending club events is a vital component of being a true Hells Angel. The Hells Angels form a tight-knit brotherhood with strict rules. Their initiation process, loyalty, and shared experiences create an unbreakable bond as they ride together on the open road. The Hells Angels have traditionally been the most feared of the motorcycle gangs operating in the shadowy underground. Some of the more notorious members who gain notoriety for their vicious methods and illegal acts have been caught and put behind bars. Let's check out the five most feared former Hells Angels who are now in prison. Why would a group as powerful as the Hells Angels choose a life behind bars? Starting off with number five, Raymond Ray. Raymond Ray Folks and Christopher Rainman Ranieri, both members of the Sonoma County chapter of the Hells Angels, were found guilty by a federal jury of racketeering conspiracy and murder conspiracy. Brian Burke, the third defendant, was found not guilty of intimidating witnesses according to court authorities. A life sentence in jail is being considered for Ranieri. Folks might be sentenced to 60 years in jail. Folks was found guilty of sexually abusing the victim's wife and threatening to denounce her husband to the police while he was being assaulted at the clubhouse. Coming in at number four is Michael Mahoney. U.S. Attorney Philip A. Talbert announced today that 30-year-old Fairfield resident Michael Mahoney was sentenced to three years and one month in prison for having a weapon with an obliterated or changed serial number and possessing an unregistered short-barreled shotgun. Court records show that on December 8, 2021, police searched Mahoney's residence as part of an investigation into a severe assault at the Vallejo branch of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Mahoney and other Hells Angels members attacked two victims in October 2021 for what they believe to be rule violations on the part of the Victims Motorcycle Club, which is considered a puppet or subordinate club of the Hells Angels. Moving on to number three is Nicholas Alexander Aguan. Defendant Nicholas Alexander Aguan, 34, of Stockton, California, was sentenced to 80 months in prison by the District Court of Guam, according to a press release from the United States Attorney for the Districts of Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands a few months ago. Aguan was found guilty of conspiring to distribute 50 or more grams of methamphetamine hydrochloride. The judge also imposed a required special assessment charge of $100 and five years of supervised release. Stay tuned to the video as we're going to discover how a former Rhode Island Hells Angels commander ended up in handcuffs and facing a five-year prison sentence. The next one on the list is George Christie. 
According to his lawyer, former Hells Angels commander George Christie Jr. was given a sentence of 10 and a half months in jail for his role in the 2007 bombing of two tattoo parlors in Ventura. According to Christie's lawyer, Michael Mayock, Christie, 66, will start serving his term in roughly two months. A plea deal and sentence paperwork from U.S. District Court Judge Wu are under seal. Christie and three others were detained in 2011 on suspicion of involvement in the bombings of two tattoo parlors on Main Street, Scratch the Surface, and Twisted Ink. Christie, who owned the competing Ventura tattoo parlor, The Ink House at the time, was president of the local Hells Angels chapter. According to Mayock, Christie was charged with eight counts of extortion and use of explosives, but only pleaded guilty to one. In the top spot, we have Joseph Lancia, the five-year prisoner. About four years ago, Joseph Lancia became the leader of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in Rhode Island. His five-year jail term began last year when he was carried out of a Providence Superior courtroom in handcuffs. Smithfield resident Lancia, 30, pleaded not guilty to felony assault and battery and unlicensed gun possession last month. As part of the agreement, the more severe charges of discharging a firearm during a violent crime and assault with intent to commit murder were dropped. Lancia is also accused of shooting at a vehicle driven by Richard Starnino, a former prospect to join the motorcycle gang who has been embroiled in an ongoing disagreement with Lancia in June of 2019. Video surveillance footage, according to investigators, shows Lancia firing at the vehicle as Starnino drives past the Hells Angels Providence headquarters on Messer Street. The clubhouse's own security camera captured the crucial video evidence used to convict Lancia. He is currently serving time in prison for his crime. Their stories of bloodshed, treachery, and criminal escapades have finally caught up with them, and now they must deal with the fallout. From behind bars, we can see the tragic consequences of following their example. What are your views on these members? Do let us know your opinions in the comments below. Let's witness the high-stakes drama develop in the courtroom as it pertains to the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. In this video, we will go through the most crazy events that have left the court system in wonder. What happens behind the closed doors of the courtroom, between the explosive testimony and the courageous defense? Let's check out three such cases. Third on the list is 67-year-old Richard DeVries. There was reasonable suspicion that violence had occurred. This chaos occurred over the Memorial Day weekend on the busy highway US-95. A gun battle broke out between the Hells Angels and Vagos. Despair set in. After six injuries, the road was shut down for several hours. The killing is being investigated as possible retaliation for another homicide in California. More people involved in this tragic confrontation were indicted on September 23rd. There were some hangarounds who wanted to join the group, and their names were Aaron Chun, Ryan Malasco, and Ronerick Padilla. Also discussed was former prospect turned Hells Angels Taylor Rodriguez. The famous Cameron Trike was there. Malasgo's injury from the shootout was revealed in court documents. Cases in court tend to raise tension. The guilty parties, Stephen Allo, Russell Smith, June, Padilla, and Trike, all received just punishments. In a vehement argument against it, DeVries lawyer questioned the justice of reducing bail. The dogged prosecutor brought up the latest indictment and the continuous criminal activity of the Hells Angels. Fair and seasoned judge Tierra Jones looked at all the evidence. The discovery by Henderson police of two unattended motorcycles in a parking lot shifted the focus of the inquiry. They discovered signs of violence, including bullet holes and blood on one of the bikes. The temporary license plate clearly indicated that one motorcycle belonged to Malazgo and the other to Smith. Chun, Malazgo, and Smith were seen by surveillance cameras entering the parking lot and then suddenly parting ways with their motorcycles. The detectives didn't give up. Padilla's fiancé's vehicle was the intended victim. They were taken aback by the amount of damaging material they discovered within. There was fresh evidence linking the suspects to the area, including bullet casings and blood spatter. Richard DeVries' appeal of his murder convictions in the Moe case was rejected by the Victorian Supreme Court of Appeal. DeVries' punishment was 31 years in prison. An important defense witness was unfairly painted by the Crown's prosecutor as unreliable, which led the court to reject the defense's appeal of the convictions. The verdict effectively confirms DeVries' guilt. 
Next one on the list is Neil Cantrell, a 62-year-old motorcyclist and gang leader attempted extortion in 2016. Ten years in prison was handed down to the mastermind. Also found guilty and sentenced to time in prison were Neil's son, Stephen Cantrell, and 49-year-old Hells Angels Robert Lowry. After almost a decade of working with Neil Cantrell, Robert Poole, the cannabis grower, told Cantrell in Edmonton in December 2014 that he wanted to leave the illegal pot business. As a gesture of goodwill, he also gave Cantrell the growing equipment, but he didn't hear back until 2016 when Cantrell called to schedule a meeting in the area of Hope, where he hoped to have a civil conversation. Poole, oblivious to the horrors that lay ahead, pulled over. Poole was discovered by the RCMP with wounds, fractures, and a burn to his forehead and was severely battered and bled. Immediately, he was taken to the hospital. Neil Cantrell, his son Stephen, and Robert Lowry ganged up on Poole and beat him while he was chained up. They showed up at Poole's house and made him sign over his stuff. Branch admitted that Robert Poole, who was put in witness protection after the incident, was affected. Branch emphasized that the mastermind behind the extortion was Neil Cantrell, who was in business with Poole and set up the meeting at the pullout. Cantrell showed no remorse at his sentencing hearing for his horrible crimes. Branch added that Neil Cantrell had an impact on his son Stephen and on Robert Lowry, a former Hells Angels hopeful and current patch member. Before a vehicle tragedy in 2009 ruined his life, Robert Lowry was a prosperous businessman with no criminal history. The judge referred to him as the muscle of the extortion ring. Before moving further, answer a question. Would you be involved in 500 kilograms of drug dealing if you got a chance? Well, the next one on the list is going to blow your mind as he executed this under the police officer's nose for several years. In the top spot, we have Emery Martin. Martin's arrest was associated with Operation J Thunder, an RCMP cocaine investigation in the northern New Brunswick counties of Acadian Peninsula, Madawaska, and Victoria. Over 60 people were apprehended in Quebec and other provinces as part of Project Objection, which was begun by Quebec's DU. Even though assault weapons were discovered after RCMP raided a Kaloa Hells Angels clubhouse and Martin was a prime suspect due to his significant ties to them, the police confirmed that none of the other people charged were Hells Angels. In January of 2011, authorities looked into a marijuana production and trafficking operation. When the RCMP discovered that the major trafficker of 500 kilograms of cocaine had exhausted every possible avenue of complexity in his efforts to avoid punishment, they moved on to phase two of their investigation. For the two years, 2016 to 2017, Martin brought in 96 kilograms of cocaine. He's been hit with 10 counts, including drug trafficking conspiracy, possession with intent to distribute, money laundering, and leading a criminal organization. Martin is guilty of multiple serious offenses. For his part in the war between the Hells Angels and the mob from 1994 to 2002, he pled guilty to conspiracy in Montreal's Guan Courthouse in June 2015. Many innocent bystanders were among the 160 people killed in this biker gang war in Quebec. Martin was found guilty of smuggling 27 kilograms of hashish into Canada in 1990 and giving credit for 15 years served. So this was all about it. Which one did you find the craziest and why? Let us know in the comments below.